Hey guys and welcome to the final part in this AMD DX4100 series where we'll be looking at some networking cards in order to provide some connectivity to the computer. Now if these network LEDs aren't totally mesmerizing, I don't know what is. So I've got a fine selection of ISA networking cards here. I have excluded PCI cards because I wanted to keep it old school. Like this one, the 3Com Etherlink 3 from 1997. I've also got a digital equipment one. This one looks a bit older, but I think it's around the same period. So this is one from digital equipment, the DE205. And then I got a very popular card from Realtek, which is the RTL 8019AS. So we're going to be taking a look at those. So the goal of this video will be to go over them, install them in our 486DX4, set them up with their respective setup utilities, install them in Windows for workgroups, and get them on the network so that we can start copying files. And we will start with this 3Com Etherlink 3 card from 1997. I really like this card. It's simple. It only has one connector, which is the RJ45 Ethernet connector. But other than that, it's a really, really good card. Uh, and I think it will fit this system very nicely. Now, one of the things I really like about these 3Com networking cards is their drivers. So I have the driver disk here for the 3C509 card, two disks. The first disk contains some drivers for Windows 95, Windows NT. And on the second disk, you will find a configuration utility. So let's go ahead and look into that. So we have a 3C5X9CFG.exe that we can execute. So I'm going to do that. And here you can see that it's found the networking interface card and we can configure the networking interface card using this program. So we can configure stuff like IO address, IRQ, boot ROM address, the transceiver type. This one only has an Ethernet UTP connector, RJ45, so we can only configure that. We can also run the built-in diagnostics. So there is a test setup that we can do here and then run an actual test. And this will test the basic functions of the networking card. When it's hooked up to uh, an actual network, it can do some additional tests. And as you can see, everything has passed. So that's a good way to verify that your you know, IO addresses and IRQ settings are set up properly. So now time to install Windows for Workgroups 3.11. I have the first disk in my GoTech here. So all we need to do now is execute the setup program which will uh, launch us into the Windows setup application. So here we just need to press enter, start the Express setup. I'm gonna be installing it in the Windows folder and then it will start copying files. Switching disks is just a matter of pushing a button on the GoTech, so no issues there. So it will continue with copying files. That's what I like about using this GoTech floppy emulator is that you don't need to deal with uh, floppy disks. Uh, you just put in your USB thumb drive and you're good to go. And after a while, it will launch into the second part of the setup, which is more graphically oriented. It will now attempt to detect the networking card. Unfortunately, we're not getting any feedback from that process at all. So we're just uh, confronted with a prompt here to enter our name, company and product number but I am confident that it will have found my networking card. So next up, we're again in the business of copying files. I am speeding up this process just so you guys don't get any false hopes when you get your GoTech USB drive. It is fairly slow. We're not interested in setting up a printer. Here we get to the networking setup. So at this point, I'm fairly sure that it has found my card. Otherwise we wouldn't get this prompt. So it will install Windows support for the Microsoft Windows Network 3.11. I can specify a username here for this Windows installation, specify a work group and a computer name. So let's name this accordingly. And it will now conclude with copying some files from the last two disks of the Windows uh, installation set, which are primarily network related files that it will now copy. 
So after that, our Windows installation is pretty much complete. Always love the fact that it's laying out these windows here and filling them up with icons. It's now searching for applications which are on the hard drive. So we're just gonna skip this for now. Skip the tutorial and restart the computer. And now the moment has arrived, the first time we enter Microsoft Windows for Workgroups 3.11 and we are greeted with the program manager here with the main folder and the Windows setup application. So let's check the networking settings. And as you can see, it has found our 3Com Etherlink 3 card on the correct base IO. So it has configured two protocols. And that is the IPX SPX compatible transport with NetBIOS and Microsoft NetBuoy. Now these are two very popular protocols back in the day to do file and print sharing. But in this particular case, I want to install TCP IP as a primary networking protocol, which is not delivered by default in Windows 3.11. So for that, you need to have an additional protocol disk, which is called TCP 32B, which I have here. So if you look at the readme, this is being identified as Microsoft TCP IP 32 for Microsoft Windows 3.11. And the idea is that you just add this as uh, an unknown protocol to the networking stack. So let's go ahead and do that. We go into Windows Setup, change the networking settings, go to Drivers, click Add Protocol, Unlisted or Updated Protocol, let this point to our TCP IP disk, which is this one here. And as you can see, this has identified a protocol as being Microsoft TCP IP 32 3.11b. So we're gonna be installing that. And with that, it's gonna be installing some, you know, TCP IP related client applications like Telnet and FTP, and it will have added the TCP IP protocol to this network adapter. So with that being said, the only thing we need to do now is figure out how this uh, networking card is gonna get an IP address. And we're gonna be using the DHCP protocol for that, which is supported by this TCP IP stack. So we're just gonna enable that. For that, we need to do a reboot. And after we reboot, our computer should have gotten a IP address from the DHCP server on our network, and we should be able to set up TCP IP based communication. But just to verify that I've actually gotten an IP address, I'm gonna launch up an MS-DOS prompt and execute the ipconfig command, which will show me the IP address that has been assigned from my DHCP server. And this is in fact the address that you see here. And I can also execute a ping to another computer on the network just to see that we have network connectivity up and running. Now, Microsoft has installed a number of TCP IP client applications like this FTP application as part of the TCP IP stack. Now, this is a very basic FTP client. It's basically just a command line interface in a window allowing you to connect to an FTP server by IP address, which I'm doing here. Fortunately, I forgot the username and password for my FTP server, but I mean, the communication is definitely established. So that is very good. Now I am going to be installing a proper FTP client with an actual front end. I'm going to be using WSFTP for that, which is you know an FTP client that I used a lot back in the day. I, I remember this vividly. It has a really nice interface here, allowing you to specify multiple FTP connections. So I'm going to be connecting to my Synology FTP server here. And I mean, I, I use this program a lot and you know, the magic of uh, being able to download files onto your computer via the network or the internet even was just a mind boggling experience at the time. I mean, files that weren't on your computer all of a sudden were there. So yeah, really, really exciting stuff back in the day. And it's really nice to kind of revisit this user interface. So here, I'm just connected to my local FTP server and I can uh, start downloading files onto my local disk. And this is something which is often very underestimated, the fact that you have a networking card in your retro PC. I mean, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. As soon as you have a computer in your network, which is hosting you know, drivers or software or games or whatever, you get immediate access to these files and setting up a network on these retro PCs is actually pretty easy. So now that we have connectivity, I copied over my S3 Verge video drivers onto this PC from my FTP server. And I'm gonna be using the Windows Setup program here to change the system settings, change the display, click other display, and then have it point to our S3 Verge drivers for Windows Forward Groups. 
And now we can choose a resolution, the amount of colors that we want to see, and whether we want to see small fonts or large fonts. So I'm going to go with this setting here, 1024 by 768, which is a nice resolution. That's also the maximum resolution of my LCD panel. So let's go ahead and install the drivers, restart Windows, and we should have lots of desktop real estate after this reboot. I mean, just look at this. Now, the second card I wanted to take a look at was this Etherworks 3DE205 card from Digital Equipment Corporation. This card, unlike the 3Com card, which only has the RJ45 connector, this one has three types of connectors. So we have the RJ45, in the middle we have a DB15 connector, and alongside that we have the BNC coaxial connector. Now the reason why I'm showing you this card is just to see how it compares in terms of insulation when we stack it up against the 3Com card that we showed earlier. So let's launch the setup utility program for this network interface card and see what we have. Uh, again, it looks fairly familiar. It has detected the card, I.O. port, IRQ, which is wrongly set to 5 at this point. It also should include a diagnostics program, so let's take a look. And if we do a run, I was expecting to see an IRQ failure here, but instead I got this memory page register test failure. Now, the documentation of the networking card does mention that you need to exclude certain memory regions when you're using an extended memory manager, as we are doing in this case. So I will need to exclude a memory address range here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now back into the diagnostics program, we now see the expected IRQ failure. So this should be an easy fix. We can just go and enter the change settings menu here, change the IRQ to number 10. I'm also gonna change the memory base address to D000. And we should be good to go after a reboot. And as expected, the diagnostic test now passes. Now installing the card in Windows is just a matter of adding an adapter. Now, even back then, Windows for Workgroups had a detect button here, which allowed it to detect a networking card in the computer. Unfortunately, for this particular card, this doesn't work. It's not able to detect it. But as we'll see later on, it does work. But for now, we're just going to have it point to our driver disk, which I have here. So as you can see, the DEC Etherworks 3 Turbo card has been detected. All we need to do now is add the TCP IP protocol, and we should be good to go. But we're not, because we are confronted with this error message upon restarting Windows. So we need to see what's up. So let's go into the network setup. And as you can see, we have selected the wrong IRQ here. So after setting this to 10, this should work, right? So let's restart. And again, it doesn't. So again, into the networking setup to see what's up. Now, IRQ is correct, IO port is correct, but here in the advanced network adapter settings, we see that the enhanced memory mode must be set to 32K. And here in this window, it is set to 32K, but in the setup program, it was still at 2K. So we need to change it here to 32K, hit save, and then finally, it should be up and running. And indeed it is. We can now boot Windows without any errors. And a quick verification in the MS-DOS prompt shows us that we have an IP address. So the card is working fine now. Now the final card I wanted to take a look at was this Realtek RTL 8019AS card. It has both the RJ45 and the coaxial connector. This is a very popular networking chip. Great support, uh, easy to find. This card in particular uh, allows you to set it up using jumpers or uh, via configuration. It also has a plug and play that you can enable or disable, but it comes with this RSET8019 setup program, similar to the other networking cards, allows you to view the current configuration, uh, run the setup to change the existing configuration and run some diagnostics. So let's go ahead and enter the setup. We can set the operating mode. So it's jumperless because we're gonna configure it using software. I'm gonna set the medium type to 
auto detect because you, know, you can choose between 10 base T and 10 base 2. I'm going to enable full duplex mode, set the IO to 300, set the interrupt to 10, and then save these settings to the card. After that, we can run the diagnostics just to make sure that everything is working fine. And as you can see, everything passes and we don't get any failures. Now, uh, in the beginning of the video, I told you that Windows for Workgroups has this auto detect feature to detect networking cards in the computer. Now, uh, so far, this hasn't really worked, but in this case, it has found this um, Realtek card as an NE2000 compatible card. So the only thing we need to do now is set the IRQ value and we should be good to go. So we don't need to install any you know, vendor specific drivers for these NE2000 compatible cards. We just need to make sure that the settings are set correctly. Now, of course, it is still possible to install the vendor specific drivers. For example, Realtek does provide a Windows for Workgroup driver. So you also have the option to install that if you want. Now we've already looked at the FTP protocol and an FTP client application to transfer files between computers. But a more common way to transfer files between computers is to use network drives. As you can see here, when I want to connect to a network drive, I get a list of all of the computers in my work group. Unfortunately, my Synology NAS uh, devices on the network don't allow for Windows for work group clients to connect to them. Now, as you can see in the control panel here of my Synology, it does support the SMB protocol and it's the primary file sharing service that I use for Mac and for Windows 98, Windows XP, all of that works fine. And uh, despite the fact that in the advanced settings, there is, does seem to be support for the SMB version one of the protocol, it doesn't allow me to uh, connect from a Windows for Workgroups client. I did have to enable a local master browser for the computers or the devices to show up in the network work group on the Windows for work groups. But I kept getting these access denied errors as soon as I tried to browse, you know, the shared folders of one of those Synology devices. Now, Windows 98, on the other hand, is a different story. So here I have Windows 98 running in a virtual machine. I have set it up completely with a network configured, TCP IP, file and print sharing enabled. And as soon as I share a folder here using the standard uh, sharing properties of the folder, let me do that right here for this share folder. I have some games here. Now, as soon as this is shared in Windows 98, the Windows for Workgroups client can connect to this shared folder without any issues. And as such, I can browse my Windows 98 shared folder on this Windows for Workgroups computer. So that's really nice. So that this gives me easy access to files on the network. And I can obviously also open an MS-DOS prompt from Windows. And then in the MS-DOS environment, I also get access to this shared folder. Now, Windows 3.11 Windows for Workgroups can also share its own folders. So we just go into the disk menu, share as, and then, you know, if you select a folder, you can set the appropriate permission. So here I'm sharing the upload folder, but I can also share an entire drive. For example, if I want to share this, the D drive here, just go into the share directory. I'm going to set this to read only. And then these two, uh, shared drives will become available on the other side. So if I go into Windows 98 here, go into the networking neighborhood, find my AMD DX4, I can see the two shared uh, folders here. And then I can go ahead and browse them or I can map them to a networking drive. And this is a very convenient way to copy files across an older 486 based Windows 3.11 installation and a more modern Windows 98 installation. And one final thing that I wanted to show you here is MTCP. Now, MTCP is a TCP IP stack and a set of applications which is designed to run very well on these older systems running MS-DOS. So with MTCP, you can set up TCP IP connectivity from an MS-DOS environment without the need to use 
Windows or uh, Windows uh, Client Manager or networking clients. So this is a standalone product which will give you a TCP IP stack and a set of utilities. So let's see how this works. Now in the MTCP download, there is a samples folder in which you will find a sample configuration file. So if I take this file, it is heavily annotated. There are lots of comments here, uh, but I'm just gonna be using this default file. I'm not gonna be changing anything. I'm just going to use this file as is. I'm going to copy it to a folder on my C drive. I am going to be calling it mtcp.cfg. And I'm also gonna copy all of the other applications on this folder on my C drive. Next thing we need to do is we need to set an environment variable called mtcpcfg and have that point to our mtcpcfg file that we have just created. Then all we need to do is reboot our machine, go into the mtcp folder and then try out some commands. So let's say for example, I wanna try out the dhcp command. This is the command that should give my network an IP address. Now that command, and all other commands for that matter, will fail because it's not able to set up the packet driver. So what is a packet driver? Well, each networking card, if you have the setup disks, should have a packet driver. For example, the DE205 card that I'm currently working with has this packet driver folder in its uh, setup disk. And there you will find an executable, which is the actual packet driver for this networking card. So this is a small program, which is a TSR. So it remains in memory once you start it. And it is typically used by, you know, network client software that requires low level access to the networking card via this packet driver. Every packet driver needs to be executed with a software interrupt as an argument. So in the MTCP configuration, it's using interrupt 60. So we're gonna be using that as well. And as we are loading the packet driver here, you should see some output that it has found a networking card. It will display you know, the IO, IRQ settings, and typically also the network address. You can execute the mem command just to see that the packet driver is indeed in memory. It typically doesn't consume a lot of memory, a couple of kilobytes. And if we execute the DHCP command now, you will see that it has been able to retrieve an IP address because it was able to find that packet driver. And now that we have an IP address, we can use other uh, applications which are in the MTCP stack, for example, the ping command to check uh, network connectivity. I can also use the FTP command to connect to an FTP server. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you can see, this is working without any issues. So let's go ahead and download a file, see if that works. And here we're getting the file onto our local machine. And that about wraps it up for this 486DX4100 series. So we've covered a lot of ground with this one. We went over the hardware in this computer. Played some games. Still have the original motherboard that I'm definitely going to fix in the future, so stay tuned for that. I also have some additional footage on the Philips Double Speed CD-ROM drive that I fixed, so that will probably end up in a separate video. And I'm probably also going to use it as a Linux machine in the near future. So yeah, definitely stick around for that. For now, I'm going to leave you with the mesmerizing network LEDs. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, giving it a thumbs up, leaving a comment. Stay safe, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.